Hello, hello, hello. I think the recording is started. Welcome to our yeah. movie club. Today we discussing episode number six of Better Than Us series about bots, right? And it's I like this because we have um, more conversations than, than usually about bots in our chats <laughs> recently. So we kind of getting close here, right? About and all these AI things and everything. Yeah, getting interesting. Okay, Vova, any new characters? No. Well, we know everyone, right? Yes. Okay, who is Janna? I'm just checking you. Janna is a uh, liquidator sister. Exactly. And uh, the one, uh, right, girlfriend of Igor, can you say so? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay, Sergey, who is Marina? Mm. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a uh, friend of uh, ex-wife, I think. Yeah, kind ah, of no, no, Ma Ma Marina, I think it's a, a colleague uh, of uh, investigator uh, in the police department. Yeah, police department? I think it's a lawyer, no? Yeah, no, she, yeah she's the lawyer friend of Allah. Yeah, uh, she's she's the yeah. one who is in charge of these cameras and recordings and you know and every, everything about Gleb, George and Allah. Yeah. Irina's the police woman. Irina, good, good. Yeah. Okay, let's start with the questions. Uh well, first of all, it was an interesting episode. I liked it a little bit. Uh in the beginning. <laughs> but then it because at, at some moment it looked like you know. Mexican soap uh, drama, how we call it, soap, <laughs> <laughs> soap operas, yeah. soap opera, yeah, soap opera. So a little bit, but then okay, then they fixed it. Okay, any uh, volunteer for number one? Mesma, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, what do we learn about the relationship between Glib and Bars in this episode? So it turned out to be that Gleb was the orchestrator of this uh, gang, the liquidators. He was the one that hired Bars. He gave him this life, this job, and it looks like he was kind of uh, homeless or something. He, he gave him another, a new life with this uh, job. So he was a kind of standing behind, moving everything that the uh liquidators uh, used to do mm -hmm. yeah so, so we we'll, what we learn about liquidators organizations in general it was made up mm -hmm. it, it kind of reminds me of some governments that they create a fake enemy so whenever people <laughs> try to, to, to ask for for their basic rights uh the government or like that we are not uh we're not in, in a position to discuss those rights because we have an enemy that to, to you know to i don't know this uh, just reminds me of, of this um but that was so smart from the company chronos yeah yeah so you, you know it's a very kind of common pattern i would say so Allegedly, in my country, you know, all the opposition is fake, you know, <laughs> and founded by government <laughs> just to remove, just to kind of occupy place of real opposition, you know. So <laughs> it's it seems so. So let's do you understand the reason why Kronos created this uh, liquidator? So what was what was the goal? I believe that uh, people still have this instinct against bots. So people refused the existence of bots. So Kronos wanted to create an atmosphere where people feel sympathy towards bots or maybe uh, sympathize with them somehow. So they wanted to show bots to be victims somehow. Look at the bots that are helping us and taking care of our old men and doing our stuff and stuff like that. There are just some kids, stray kids, that uh, vand making vandalism and uh, destroying uh, our kind bot. Yeah, but it looks like a devil plan, right? 
Devil's Club. Yeah. So <laughs> kind of complex. So like impossible to believe, right? <laughs> yeah. So I let's like say, it. you know, let's say I hire a group of people to, I don't know, to kill people from Azerbaijan, you know, so people will sympathize with people from Azerbaijan or something like this. So it's a pretty, I, I know, subtle game, subtle ga- game. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, a dirty game, yeah. Dirty. It's not only dirty. It's all. It looks like very, you know, delicate, right? So it's kind of, it's it's for smart people, right? It's not something you know obvious, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Let's move forward. And traditionally, our second question, the second number is number six. <laughs> <laughs> because of google talk so ignore this it's second it's second question uh, ahmed if i'm right right ahmed would you like to okay i will try uh why is paris frustrated uh, with glib and what what is glib's response when paris expresses his frustration I think Brass was frustrated because uh, Grip uh, didn't follow his instruction and uh, he will um, uh, be arrested uh, from the police. Uh, um, I think uh, he didn't follow the instruction of Grip and didn't give um, um, and the good plan or follow the good plan uh, which you give uh, from clips uh, what is clips response when Paris uh, expresses frustration uh, he replies that he um, has a good ideas to uh, and uh, another plan to make the liquidators uh, show in uh, in another way and he tried to um, to explain her ideas or the new ideas to the clip, but he, he failed to convince him. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Like right? Gleb is kind of a manipulator, right? So he's uh, thinking about all these things beforehand. Actually, you know, we we have a word. I think it's from French uh, in my language. We call someone who we cannot see, but we know that he controls everything. We call him Grey Cardinal. <laughs> so, do you, have you ever heard? No? So, it's like deep uh, state, you know? <laughs> no, I don't know that one. We, we call them provocateurs. Mm-hmm. A provocateur is a French word also. <clears throat> is someone who's behind the scenes making trouble, but you don't see it. <laughs> so they're provoking everyone, making everyone angry, making everyone hate each other, and they're sitting quietly behind the scenes, provoking everyone. So what we'll call them provocateurs? Yeah, interesting. Actually, I also don't know what is diatribe. Yeah, diatribe. Diatribe. Diatribe is a rant, uh, mm. a, lo- a long complaining uh, session. <laughs> Uh, how come I gotta, you know, how come we always have to sit down? How come we're always told to shut up? How come we can't do anything? How come, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to (laughs) diatribe's a long complaining session. Well, it's interesting that I don't know this word. Yeah, I should, (laughs) but I would do this all the time. (laughs) Exactly. So, so there are different groups of liquidators around the city. Mm-hmm. And Bars is in charge of his little group. And, you know, they protest in their part of the city. Mm-hmm. So all these groups of liquidators are kind of competing with each other. You know, in, you know, we're the best liquidator group in the whole city. So Bars wants his group to be allowed to do more. He wants more visibility. Yeah. He wants more chances to cause damage and and get recognition so he looks like a a strong leader so he wants his group to do more and gleb is telling him to slow down 
Let me tell you when you can do more. Yes. Don't do too much or the police will arrest you and you'll end up in prison. So that's what this argument was about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you say that it's an argument between hogs and doves or something like this? So extremism oh, yeah. and kind of, what's another word? Pacifiers, right? Or middle... Yeah. Middle a little point. bit, yeah. Boris wants to get more aggressive. And <laughs> Gleb is telling him, just slow down, plan. We plan it out. We go slowly. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Uh, yep. Uh, I, I think Gleb is kind of pragmatic, right? So he needs these liquidators not for one action, right? So it, it should be a tool for, for many years if needed. So I think so. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, number seven. Vova, could you please help us? What do we learn about the past relationship between George, Victor, Svetlana, and Boris in this episode? Who is Boris? Boris, Boris is uh, Victor and Svetlana's son. Exactly, okay. But uh, he was injured uh, somewhere. And George was the doctor that helped him, mm -hmm. uh, but George couldn't do it. Couldn't save him, right? But it was the previous episode, I said. So this yeah, one. And, mm -hmm. uh, Svetlana mentioned that Victor wanted to personally murder George. Ah, yeah, exactly. So it was not like just. Uh, get his job from away away from him but you know just kill him right so he was so angry so kind of i don't know what the word was so hateful i guess yeah and what well, who is now boris boris yeah uh, do they have another the boris yes they have a hobbit <laughs> <Of course. laughs> which is uh, not that idiot, right? Sometimes it's malfunction, right? This <laughs> Boris bot, yeah. <laughs> Boris. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. Sergey, would you like to? Yeah. <clears throat> what is the board of directors plan to choose which company has the best super bot model for the new upcoming early retirement program? Uh, they plan to organize uh, the uh, uh, the concourse uh, for choosing some people, uh, some companies, but uh, they plan they plan to make a TV show uh, where they uh, uh, plan to test some uh, kinds of robots from other companies, and uh, they wanted to see wh which what uh, robots can do and. How robots manage, how robots communicate with other people, with other robots, and uh, uh, I think it it may be interesting for uh, for TV uh, TV Watch, from people, yeah, for people, TV yeah. watcher, yeah. Good. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of a clever idea, right? So people will see this board, they will understand, you know, this one better. And people like TV shows in general, right? So we... <laughs> <laughs> why, Sergey, why do we love Kardashians, right, after all? <laughs> so, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, this decision uh, allowed to avoid some uh, suspicions about corruption about something because uh, who people uh, might see uh, the uh, causes of choosing. Yeah, and uh, return back to this word, tender. Tishu, do you know tender? Tender, yeah. Yeah, tender is, uh, I don't understand it in this usage. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Russians use this word this way. To me, it's a competition. Yeah, I think it's kind of a bad translation from Russian. So in Russia, what we call tender. Tender is a when government want to buy something, they cannot just buy from you know random source. They right. yeah. must have a competition between different vendors, and the best vendors win. It's kind of idea to 
uh, save tax money and everything, yeah. make yeah. the market fair. And yeah. in our language, we call this tender. This this competition we call tender. Right. Yeah. We call it the bidding process, you know. Bidding, yeah, makes sense. You know, I'll pay 10, I'll pay 20, mine will do 30, I can do 50. And they kind of compete with each other to see who can pay the most or who can offer the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So government price, you know, we need to change 10 elevators in the town. Max price is Z, mean price is Z. It yeah. must be that long. It must be in contract for 10 yeah. years and all, all the details. Yeah. And then you have to, the one who win the tender, you know, is a lucky one. And usually somehow it's usually a company that leads by sister of the mayor or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Don't know who you just, know. Yeah, yeah, just a coincidence as always. <laughs> who you know, not what you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. Do we have anyone? Next one, please. Actually, I have a comment on this part. Please, please. Uh, I I don't know if I uh, if I am overthinking it, but uh, I think this is so smart. Instead of uh, instead of uh, convincing people of the idea of replacing them with bots, no, they jumped to step number two, which is choosing between bots. So people yeah. would feel enthusiastic and feel like uh, happy with the winner bot and stuff like that, and they will be shocked at the end. Hold on a second. We were choosing the winner bot for replacing us. This is going to be hilarious. Uh, I'm not sure if they intended this, but that was so smart uh, from their side, actually. Yeah, good call. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it reminds it reminds me of justice in some countries. You know, some countries they go to you and say you can get one year in prison or fifteen years in prison. You choose. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> can be a nice country. So <laughs> just money. just call guilty, you know, and you will get one year in prison. Call you not guilty, you will get court system, you know, and you will get fifteen years. So. Yeah, psychological <laughs> games. Yeah. Please, system. Plea bargains, yeah. That's what you're talking about. I'll say I'm guilty. You give me a smaller sentence. Okay. Everybody has less less trouble, less money we have to spend. Convenient. It's more convenient if you plea guilty. We'll give you a perk. Yeah. Yeah, but my, my, my point was teacher Lee, they, they they never try, you know, to investigate the case. They just find a random victim and give him this deal, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> So it's what Nesmo says, you know, we're not going to convince you, convince you that you are guilty, you know. You are guilty already because of our system. But you can choose, you know, will it be okay. light way or hard way? Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a scapegoat, yeah, good word. Um, do we have a volunteer for the next one? This one, would you like to continue? Yeah, 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 sure. Please. Uh, what do we learn about the past relationship between Ella and Leo in, the, in this episode? I believe, uh, Teacher Lee, you meant uh, Georgie? Mm, Ella. Ella and now, Georgie? Now I, now, I don't know why I said past. No, between Ella and Leo. In other words, uh, they're, they're starting to have problems in their relationship. What What's happening to their relationship in this episode? Uh, so far, we learned that Leo is a perfect partner. He understands and he is giving love and, uh, you know, feelings, good feelings to, towards her. But um, that even he understood the, her, her staying behind and uh, for her kids. But um, they started to have some problems when he saw the trail of the family shop <laughs> of the box. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, like uh, tired of her lying. Because this makes sense that she's lying because oh. he can see with his bare eyes that she's having a good life with his with her ex husband and their bot and they're having a picnic and oh. the garden stuff like that. This is so ideal for a family. Okay. I, so, I think I, I, think I know a good, a good word for this. So she was not a trustworthy, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so probably of. The past history or something. Yeah. So so he's waiting on her to arrive in Australia and she keeps getting delayed because of the legal problem of getting custody of the kids. 
and she knows that he's not going to wait a long time because he's a man and he wants a woman to have sex with and, you know, clean his house and all this stuff. So she's worried that if she makes him wait too long, he'll dump her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but this tells a, me he doesn't <laughs> love her that much. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it, I think it's a huge complication for Allah, right? Because she, her plan was pretty different. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Salma, would you like to take the next one? Yes. Please. Uh, why do uh, a boss kick a girl out of yeah. both nets when, uh, when he next tried to visit uh, uh, Donna, and mm -hmm. why did he later welcome uh, him back or welcome Igor back? Home? First, he kicked him out uh, as um, a Gleb asked him to uh, kick Igor out and not to welcome him. And after he um, uh, after he saw or he, after he had seen uh, the trailer of um, the boss or of the back net, uh, then he called. He asked uh, uh, Zana to call him and um, ask, uh, asked him to come. Then uh, he welcomes him back. And um, uh, when uh, Igor asked uh, ask him why uh, he kicked him out, just he said that because he uh, was arrested and released and they were worried that uh, the police might uh, follow him or check him uh, out. Uh, that's to make sure uh, that uh, no one follows him or the police doesn't uh, or uh, don't sorry the police don't um, follow him yeah so to say it like very short so igor is a tool right for botnets to get to <laughs> to the bot yeah right? yeah good and usually again so, challenge, so, ch challenges my vocabulary. So placates, Yegor's echo. So does it mean shows or heart? Calms, calms or pleases, oh. makes oh. him feel makes him feel happy. <laughs> okay, so, okay. When a little kid's like ah! you give them a toy and they're happy. So you, <laughs> yeah. you please them to <laughs> shut them up. <laughs> So Igor, yeah. was, Igor was giving Janna for this, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so Bars, when he kicked Igor out, he was obeying Gleb. Yeah. But now he's got a way to make himself look more important. So he invited Igor back, and that's disobeying Gleb. He's acting on his own little agenda now. Yeah, so, so it's Glenn a game. Doesn't know this. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a game inside someone else's game, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it usually ends bad, but we will see, right? A plot within a plot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Achmed, but sure. Yeah, Achmed, did you want to add to this question, or we, we go to the next one? Yes, uh, number eleven. But I have a question. Is this if it Svetlana uh, uh, is a, uh, what is his name, uh, Victor's uh, wife. So Svetlana is a wife of the Kronos boss. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, okay. I want to Mark, Mark sure. his main engineer, you know, so his CTO or something. Yeah. Remember, okay. she's, she's got the talk show. Remember, she did the interview on her talk yeah, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, what do uh, we learn about the relationship between Msolv and Svetlana and Svetlana? I think this is um, a legal relationship between uh, Muslava and Svetlana because uh, her husband, Vic, was, uh, we can say, very rude man. Mm -hmm. She is considered as a murderer, and uh, he has no feeling. He only focuses on the work, and he always neglects her. Mm -hmm. So they are they are lovers, right? And when you said they they were they have illegal relationship, I started to think 
Is it really illegal? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, yes. Know. So in the I, sense that police will came and get you, it's not that illegal in my country, you know? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, it's... Um... Uh, she has husband and she's uh, what can I say? She has a relationship with another partner. Illicit is a better term. Illicit. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Good. Uh, Good. So uh, the adultery is illegal in some countries. I think the Muslims uh, yes. Yes. will put people to death or something if you're an yeah. adulterer, right? Sure. I, if, yes. Just uh, jail. Jail. Just, yeah. just jail mm-hmm. now, kinder, gentler <laughs> Islam. <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so not good. All right. Yeah, but why I was thinking about this, because it is kind of illegal, right? Because it's kind of adds something to your divorce process, if you can prove it, right? So it's it's kind of um, an, uh, a fact that works for you. So, but but it's not like a, you know a crime, right? In a sense, it's not a crime, so no yeah. one but is going to arrest you for this. Yes, yes, I get your point. Sergey, do you have another experience? <laughs> 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 Maybe I, I I don't remember now. <laughs> yeah, and the, I I think that uh, the moral problem because uh, uh, oh. Obvious, she uh, betrayed uh, her husband, but uh, the most problem is that uh, the Maslowski uh, betrayed uh, his friend. And uh, in my country, it's the most uh, moral, uh, it, it's a more moral uh, problem because uh, uh, the man can change uh, the wife, but uh, the friend, <laughs> in my opinion, uh, it's a uh, it's a problem uh, which you uh, be with you all life. Mm-hmm. So from 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 cultural points, of view, it states that you know it's different grades, right? To betray your family, betray your wife, and betray your kind of friends and colleagues and stuff. Well, it's hard for me to say what is what is more guilty, what is more deep. So I don't know, but I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the court or people will blame one of the two people. Well, it's the man's fault. It's not the woman's fault. It's the man's fault. We have a saying: it takes two to tango. You can't dance by yourself. You have to blame both of them equally. They both know that they're destroying someone's family. So, okay. I remember yeah, that. and uh, this you can dis- destroy the family, but in this movie, after uh, this betrayal, uh, you can destroy whole company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's got a plot. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a bad company after all, right? So, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, uh, we we don't uh, we are not talking about bad or good company. We are mm-hmm. talking about the consequences for company. And Maslowski uh, had to uh, think about it, but uh, he he didn't <clears throat> think about it. Mm-hmm. it. Okay, the next question is pretty similar, I guess. And Nesma, I I just uh, recall that you used this uh, It Takes Two to Tango in the last session we had. So I think today we had a better kind of situation for this uh, idiom, or how would you call it? Idiom, saying, saying, yeah. It's the same, yeah. Saying. Okay, Uh, the next question is very similar. So Katya and Bars, they are lovers. And we just learned this, right? It's uh, why it's important for us. So why we think about it? Why we represented this fact, Sergey? What do you think? So Katya and Bars, wow. right? Bars, uh, it's a guy from Liquidators, right? Katya is the one from Corporation Kronos. Do you remember she was an operator of the bot? You know. Ah, yeah, yeah. So they are lovers, we learned in this episode. So, but why is the plotter for the story? Uh, the uh, the plotter, but uh, they are 
they look like uh, Romeo and Juliet uh, because uh, for <laughs> other uh, parts they are looking like uh, enemies. Mm. But we know that uh, they are working for one side, but Bart uh, don't know that uh, about Katya, and Katya knows that Bart uh, work for Kronos. And uh, uh, it looks like uh, destroying process for both sides because uh, Bart uh, very emotional and uh, he young, he, he he's young, he uh, he is not a strategic man. Uh, he lives one uh, one day and uh, he didn't know about next day, about day after next day, and uh, uh, he made uh, destroy who strategic plans of GLEP. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So one step uh, at a time, right? Yeah, and I, I, I was thinking about the answer. I would say that because of the conflict of interests, right? So they have, they might, well, the groups they belong have different interests, right? So they might... In my opinion, uh, in my opinion, in this uh, series, uh, in this episode, we watched a lot of... Uh, conflict of interest yeah. uh the relationships between uh wives of uh, head of Kronos and maslovsky uh, the relationships between katya and uh bart uh offer from uh, uh wife of uh, head of Kronos for making the tv show and it's a lot of conflict of interest yeah i would say contrived right teacher contrived plot so with everything is connected but it's much better sergey right that is if we had you know <laughs> two groups you know you are black you are white so you are good you are bad so let's see <laughs> <laughs> what happens yeah okay uh, let's go to the next one uh Svetla, what sweet what does Svetlana learn from maslov about victor's super bot problem So Maslov was uh, was the word what's the word for this? Was talking too much, right? Was sincere with uh, uh, with Svetlana, right? Lo well, <clears throat> loyal to Victor, Ooh. but in love with Sl Svet Svetlana, yeah. Yeah, and he talked too much and gave her some, you know, some trumps, you know, some some insights, some better understanding about the problem. About the tender, yeah. Yeah, yeah, about the tender, yeah. And so she's so Victor's worried. <laughs> Victor needs to know more what the competition is in advance so he can train Arisa. Yes. How how we call it? We call it a. Uh, uh, so it's kind of a dirty game, right? So when you know the com competition before, so it's kind of a cheating, right? It's a good good way to. Yeah. Yeah, Victor needs some tell. Okay, let's go to the next one. Do we have a volunteer for Irina and George? <laughs> and Irina is a girl from Polis. Yeah. Irina is a colleague of Valava. Oh, yeah. Would you like to tell about this? Oh. Uh... Okay, uh, George went out uh, to joke, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, Irina stopped him and she told him that Vic they wanted <clears throat> to to investigate to investigate about Victor. Mm -hmm. uh, and they took it right, and she gave some kind of intels about uh, Victor's case, right? She said there were kind of how many twelve uh, cases of kidnapped children, right? And how Victor was related to this kidnapped children? Do you remember? Victor. Yeah. Why? Why they think he's uh, he's connected to these cases? Um... Because they were they they were bots, right? Mm -hmm. With the face of children. Why? Why? Um, because he made both 
Yeah, I remember it's actually, please correct me if I can use it. I remember the phrase red herring, right? Something like this. So it's when you try to make a trouble for investigation. Is it correct? Yeah, a red herring is a false evidence to to make them go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So can we use it for this uh, boss with face with children's face? I don't I don't know where you're going with that. No. no. My understanding is that he Kronos kidnapped kids and basically copied their faces and made robots killed the kids the families were distraught and then chronos comes up and says we can offer you a replacement kid it's a bot but it'll replace your kid and make you feel better so i think it was a plot to sell more bots you know with a different reason in mind to replace uh -huh. a lost lost child when i watched it i remember that irina police woman she said, you know, these uh, fake bots, they make troubles for investigators. So she said time was uh, wasted for these evidences. Yeah, th what that meant was they put these bots out on the streets so fast mm -hmm. that everyone was seeing these kids all the time. So they didn't know when the real kid really disappeared. Oh, I saw him yesterday. Well, maybe that was the bot. Maybe the kid disappeared three months ago. But if somebody said this to him yesterday, now you're not sure when the kid really disappeared. Exactly. Yeah. So what, what was that? So, yeah, in, in, in that sense. Okay. Red herring. Okay. Yeah. In that <laughs> sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. and who understand why they did not just arrest, you know, Victor for this? So if they have this suspicion for for twenty. For 12 cases, why Victor have not been arrested? Has not been? Do you remember? Because he's too powerful and the cases is not 100% sure. Yeah, because he's well connected, right? So somebody said, you know, don't investigate this anymore, right? And Varlamov lost his job because of this. Do you remember? So Varlamov was suspected, you know, for the for the first time, let's say, because of Victor's. <laughs> so so now we see the uh, second case, right? Good. I think we covered this. Um, okay, interesting one. Do we have a volunteer for explaining uh, behavior of Svetlana? This one? Yeah, it should should be what is keeping. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah, exactly. My, my mistake. Yeah. No, no, it's all right. What is keeping Svetlana from leaving Victor to be with Maslow? The obvious reason is she is afraid to be sent to the nuts house, which is uh, the insane <laughs> asylum. <laughs> but I believe she doesn't. She doesn't love Maslowski. I don't think so. She's just taking him as a bridge for some kind of a, I don't know. So <laughs> she says they are going to send her to the nuts house anyway. Yeah, good point. So Victor is a well-connected, powerful man, right? So if you leave him and he is alive and, you know, still well-connected, probably you are in danger, right? So one way or another mm -hmm. way, he will, he, will, he will come after you. So it's better, you know, to... Yes make him miserable first <laughs> and then <leave> <laughs> <laughs> it should work, work better she's blaming yeah. him for the death of their son which does not look right for me i don't know he looks good to her sometimes i don't know yeah so so this is about reputation victor's a prestigious man you know and he owns chronos he make you know he makes robots that all of Moscow uses. If his wife were to suddenly divorce him, it would make him look like a bad husband, maybe a bad father. So to protect himself, he would probably say, "Oh, my wife's insane. She's crazy. That's why she divorced me. We'll put her in an asylum and we'll try to get help for her." So yeah, she's worried about being locked up 
so that his reputation is protected. But she showed some signs of insanity, teacher. She deal, dealt with the bot as a real son, right? Yeah, she she does have a little some mental issues, but <laughs> but I wouldn't call her insane. I mean, she she can reason and be sneaky, right? Well, yeah. I would say that she was much more insane in previous episodes, but she's kind of logical <laughs> now. So before yeah. that, the picture was different. Before that, she was just you know clearly insane. You know, uh, killed by the heart of the uh, losing boy so probably I, I had another opinion but now it's different yeah yeah before she wasn't focused on you know a plan you know now she's she's focused on destroy victor and get Maslow and you know uh, other things like that so yeah she's yeah. a little more a little little less crazy now yeah. What can what can be better, right? To have a crazy woman after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Yeah, it's a life of the dream. Yeah. Okay, uh, next question. It's a bit complicated. Sergey, would you like to take it? We found uh, we find uh, out that the Safrona family apartment is wired with cameras to monitor their daily listings part of their sponsorship with Kronos to promote Arisa in marketing video to private test group groups. Once Kronos decide to unilaterally air these videos to general public, what's uh, George's response? What's our concern? What's Leo's response? Who uh, free uh, free questions uh, uh, where uh, the understandable consequences? Uh, George's response uh, was uh, bad because uh, he didn't want to promote his uh, life for general public now because uh, he didn't the contract with the Kronos for so uh, his life. Uh, every time for everywhere. Uh, all are concerned about uh, a relationships uh, between Hyo and Leo because uh, he understand and understood that uh, he uh, would have some problems uh, if Leo uh, watched this advertisement. And Leo uh, uh, did uh, the. Uh, logical steps and we discussed earlier because uh, I don't understand uh, what uh, what I do in this uh, in this case I uh, would do the similar things uh, as Leo uh, what's happened why do you uh, go to the ex-husband uh, yeah. why do you live with him and uh, all uh, explanation from her it's uh, would be bullshit for me because it is bullshit. <laughs> but she didn't explain. She didn't explain anything, right? She said, "You know, calm down. You know, I will explain you. Everything is good." So, but she never, she never explained things. Uh, it's <laughs> complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I just reminded a funny story. You know, many years ago, uh, we had a Ponzi scheme. Do you know Ponzi scheme? It's kind of a pyramid with money, so. Uh, it's kind of a connery with with uh, money, and there was a famous actor on TV who was on advertisement or advertisement of this Ponzi scheme. So later on, when people lose lose their money, lost their money, he was the one to blame. You know, everyone hated him. You know, because it's he who convinced us to give our money to this Ponzi scheme. So I think you know if. Uh, robots will start kill people, you know, every day. <laughs> so George will not be happy about his participants in advertisement. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do, 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 do you guys know what is Pons scheme, if I pronounce it correct? Ponzi, yeah, Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ponzi was a famous guy who cheated a bunch of people, so... When you do something like he did, we call it a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> You're cheating people out of a lot of money like he did. Yeah. Yeah. And it works and works and works, you know, because people never learn. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> yes, I agree. You know, cryptocurrency. I think Kardashian, some celebrities were involved in promoting some cryptocurrency and everyone put their money into it. And then the company went bankrupt yeah. and everybody lost their money and they started blaming the celebrities. Well, yeah. you told us it was a good investment, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, what I, it's what I'm afraid is the destiny of Josh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Um, Vasas, would you like to? You're so quiet. I'm, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to do. When Grape and Victor discuss the liquidators, mm -hmm. uh, describe why Victor is both pleased with Grape and yet worried about the liquidators. Um, I'm not sure that I remember all the details. If anyone wants to talk about this. Remember, Maslow is always getting praised by Victor. And Maslow keeps saying what? Give me money. Don't give me praise. Give me more money. <laughs> <laughs> so Victor gave Gleb more money. Beep. Wow, what's this big amount of money you just gave me? You know, I'm pleased with you because, you know. Uh... Well, it's a very Russian tradition. You know, actually, we had this uh, idea of socialism for so long. And at that time, you know, money price, money kind of premium, it was a impossible thing. So if you do your work good, you're getting another medal, you know, or some kind of, you know, paper. It's written that you are the best one. So, so and it was from, for a long time. And, and people, I don't think they love it. <laughs> so they, they love money more. Hero of Russia, right? You're a hero of Russia. Exactly. Wow. Can I get a free coffee with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can be proud of this. Yes. That's right. <laughs> it turns out to be something global. I thought this was just in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, give me money. If you appreciate me, give me money. Uh, uh, Ahmed, please. Okay. And when Allah learn, learn is that Leo no longer trust trust uh, trust is here uh, what rebid uh, action does she plan in uh, in haste i think um, she decided to go to australia with, with her kids um she can catch the I think the license uh, mm -hmm. from Sovonov say that she or you can say that license or the permission to go abroad with her kids to Australia uh, and she uh, tried to uh, uh, to get to get a ticket to Australia to Reser reservation make a reservation to go to Australia Exactly, and she gave this paper from Georgia, right, so that he allows uh, children to leave the country. So now Georgia is in danger with his kids, yeah? Yeah, yeah, is, yes, he is in danger, but he, he didn't realize what so what happened yeah, exactly. until uh, I think uh, Ariza warned, warned him that uh, she always told him that... Uh, um, Ala, she is laying on him, but uh, always he um, he refused this his way, and he don't feel comfortable that Robot tell him the truth. Yeah, I know that in many countries it's different. It's very different, but in Russia, kids always belong to mother, whatever what. So you know, it's it's like one million percent of fathers who can, can get custody of the kids. So it's whenever what happened, if it really happened in Russia, a mother kidnapped kids. What will happen? Nothing. They will just say, you know, she's a mother. You know, so she's supporting. You know. <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty sure. So because it's it's never works different uh, kind of way. <laughs> okay, let's move forward. Uh, Wawa, could you please help me with Bar's ultimate plan and tell us why it's ultimate? <laughs> uh, 
uh, what is bus ultimate plan in regards to his uh he saw a commercial a commercial in on his TV in bar that ego was with Ahisa, and he knew that uh Gleb w- was uh after Ahisa. Mm-hmm. So he uh he uh to- told Ego to come and made up a reason why he didn't let him in earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he asked, uh, asked. Yeah. he asked to uh, show him the Arisa. Yeah, but what they were about to do with Arisa? Probably, right? To to make another execution, right? To show the power that and, we uh, yeah. you Igor didn't want it, but then he said uh, maybe uh, Jana like it too. <laughs> yeah. So if you won't get something from a young boy, just show him a girl. <laughs> he, will, he will do everything you, 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 you tell him. Yeah. Good. Uh, okay. Number next one. Number 20 in my list. Uh, Salma, would you like to get number 20? Yes, okay. Uh, what is the uh, Sivatlana Divisius? Uh, Plan to hold the vector in the the super fast tender. Um, she um, she told the, she told her vector that she's going to host uh, the bot tender TV show, and uh, she regrets that uh, she hasn't been supporting him much lately. And also, uh, she tells him that he she wants to use her professional professionalism and her charm to introduce his bot. To the world, <laughs> yeah. she deceives him <laughs> in some way, in some way, but I don't know how. Um, now she has uh, Victor's attention. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's good for her that she is a host of the show, right? So it's kind of more Yes. So how did she arrange for herself? to be the host of this tender TV show. How did she convince Nick, uh, Alexi, her, her father to let her do this? Do you remember? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Sergey, would you like to? Uh, yes. And uh, uh, I don't remember. And- discuss it or not but we know that arisa is a chinese uh, super bot and why uh, and uh, this uh, super bot uh, has been delivered from china without permission as i remember and uh, now we uh, plans to organize a tender and the co- competition between other companies why chinese company can't uh, uh, part uh, take part in this uh, competition because their uh, bots better than uh, Russian uh, super bot and Kronos is not producer Uh, Kronos is a a delivery company I know uh, as a trader company yeah but Chinese Chinese companies they probably don't know about the standard and that Arisa is in Russia you know it was not uh, it was not bought right it was Stole, still stolen, right? From stolen, from, yeah, yeah. So they don't know. So and and it was stolen like a like a, an example, right? For industrial spionage or how we call it. So it was a that's the thing, you know, to disassemble and then you know to learn the secrets as far as, far as I understand. Well, remember that in China, Arisa killed a a, a few scientists. Yeah. So she. Ah, yeah. She's illegal. She's not an acceptable robot. If the government finds out that China, that this group in China made a killer robot, they'll be in trouble. They'll end up in prison for making a killer robot. So they sold Arisa to Victor to get that robot away from them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they may not want to participate because they don't want people to know what they did or what they can do. Yeah. yeah. 
And returning back to the question of teacher Lee, so how uh, Svetlana, right? How Svetlana got this uh, uh, role of host, right? So and she already wrote the answer in the chat. So so no dad can you know can decline a request from a daughter. So it was just using a family relationship, I would say, right? So so her father wants her to have a child. She yes. and Victor aren't really close. They they aren't really, you know, in love like they used to be. They used to be deeply in love, but when Boris died, they grew apart. Yep. So so now they don't make love much and she won't have a kid with Victor. She doesn't want another kid to lose another kid. So she said, "Dad, if you let me do this, I can be closer to Victor." And I can help him and he'll love me more. And when he loves me more, I'll have a baby for you. <laughs> I'll have an heir for you. So she's using her feminine charm and what to get her to this he wants an heir. <laughs> <laughs> so she's pretty sneaky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's another thing that worries me. You know, I I I uh, it's like, you know, people with some mental disorder, they can focus on one goal, you know, and be sneaky, be <laughs> over smarty, you know, so it's, a, it's very dangerous, yeah. <laughs> we, we say crazy like a fox. <laughs> like a fox. <laughs> you seem like you're crazy, but really you're very smart. Yeah, exactly. They kept saying that about Trump. The liberals kept saying, Trump's insane. He's mad. He can't be president. Oh, he's a he's devious. Oh, he's smart. He's doing this to trick people. Well, wait a minute. Is he crazy or is he smart? You know, they can't make up their mind. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Okay, the next question about Allah and her what's the word for this? Escaping, <laughs> traveling, something. Yeah. Anyone would like to call this? 21 in my list. Ahmed, Nesma, maybe. Nesma, please. Yeah, sure. What is Ella's plan to get the kids away from Georgie so she can take them to the airport without his knowledge? She pretended that she's going to take them in a uh, out for fun, for having fun. Uh, but uh, he, Georgie, said that he's going to come with them. That's when she apologized. She, she told him to stay and prepare for his next uh, job. <laughs> uh, so she told them uh, this way. Yeah, so I'm getting our kids for a walk and you stay home and wait in our plans or do something else. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sus suspicious enough. Uh, yeah, but it was uh, stupid. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it happens, you know, like in my family, it happens three times a day, right? So my wife get my kids and go somewhere. Should I be suspicious every time? I should, but, right? <laughs> no, but she's not trustworthy, right? <laughs> it's different. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about next one? Uh, Ahmed, would you like to? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, what happens uh, uh, as Mariana is driving uh, Ala and the kids to the airport? I think uh, <clears throat> there is an argument between uh, Mariana and Ala and then uh Mariana tried to convince Sara to return on her decision to don't to go to the Australia and um, she told her that you that you know what the subsequent for that you three of the project uh, leave to Australia what the Vic will uh, deal with uh, Savronov, I think uh, she he will be in danger. So she told them to stop the car and get uh, get out from the car. Uh, I think she uh, 
uh, she changed her mind or changed her <clears throat> decision to come back again. Yeah, yeah. So she did not want to be tore up off, right, against her. So when she forgot about this during the initial decision, right, to, to, to take kids to leave the country. Another yeah. question. Well, yeah. you, Georgie, you know, was shamed before with the Torpoff Boris death, and he mm -hmm. lost his job and his career and had to work in a morgue. Now yes. he's he's on, in this video with a happy family and a robot, and they're going on a picnic, and everything's wonderful. He's a great father. He's a good husband. He's a great man. And now suddenly, if she and the family and the kids all run away from him, now he looks like an evil, bad father, husband again. And he just got a new job. So if the whole country knows that Georgie's a bad father and a husband <laughs> and his kids and wife left him, they might fire him because he's an embarrassment to their company. So she can destroy his life again <laughs> if she yeah. just runs off you know, and betrays him. So now she's worried about this. Uh, yeah, I, I was. I also think that Arisha can, you know, start to start can can uh, change her mind and not to obey anymore, right? Because it was a part of deal for Arisha as well. So can something can change? Yeah. Okay, Sergey, could you help us with the next one? What happens? <laughs> yeah. Describe uh, what happens when George finds out from Marisa that Allah is going to kidnap the kids. And uh, he started uh, to be uh, very angry and uh, he wanted uh, to uh, return them and he uh, wanted to go to the airport, but Arisa uh, told her, him that the uh, fly uh, take off uh, in 30 minutes ago and uh, they are flying now from the Moscow to Australia now and uh, you can change the situation and uh, anyway uh, George wanted to go wanted to run I don't know where but uh, he was very emotional he was very angry and Arisa had to uh, be uh, silent him and uh, she uh, stopped stopped at him. I don't know why she she making something and uh, <laughs> he was uh, frozen. And uh, after that, uh, Georgie wanted to uh, want wanted revenge of Kronos because uh, he lost uh, his family and uh, especially his uh, his uh, children. And now he wanted to damage uh, the plans of Kronos, uh, uh, killing uh, Arisa. Yeah. Well, you got the best question of the conversation. So, Bridge, Arisha, and George. <laughs> Not well, let, me, let me go back yeah, to please, the previous please. question just a moment, Ivan. Please. So, when he tried to leave the apartment in anger, she would not let him because she was afraid he would drive the car fast and crash and hurt himself. So while he thought he could catch Allah and the kids, she wouldn't let him go. After she told him the plane left, now he's calmed down. After that, she let him drive the car somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So she's always trying to protect him. Yes. 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 Prime so good. <laughs> Prime yes. Leader, I hope. <laughs> uh, yes, I like the uh, Risa reactions. Uh, very nice and uh, attracting me as well. <laughs> and to and to stop him, she didn't hit him or strike him or do any harm. She just made a loud sound. Ah! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. oh, she she disabled him in a non-violent way. What what what, what called this is not this is a voice wow in English. We just high, call it a high pitch. Sorry, a high pitch noise. High pitch, okay. High pitch noise. It hurts your ears. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. she she didn't want to hurt him. 
She yeah. wanted to protect him. So she was doing her job, but he didn't like it. <laughs> it fit into him, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sergey, you want to do it? Something? Yeah, and uh, remember, uh, during this episode, uh, Arisa permanently noticed uh, uh, Georgie. Uh, your wife uh, lied to you. Your wife <laughs> lied to you again. Your wife lied to you again. Now your wife is uh, sincere. Uh, and uh, in the end of this episode, uh, Arisa uh, told uh, told uh, to Georgie, now you are not sincere. <laughs> and uh, that's why <laughs> she uh, stopped to uh, emotional uh, emotional uh, wants uh, of Georgie to go to something. And uh, I, I support the idea of uh, te te teacher leave, that uh, <laughs> fast driving and uh, yeah. not uh, expected uh, cases. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so well, last one, please. Mm -hmm. At the end of this episode, describe what transpires between Ahisa and Georgie on the overpass bridge. <clears throat> uh, Georgie steps up on a beach, uh, beach, uh, yeah. on a beach, and and Ahisa thinks that he is going to jump. Mm -hmm. So, uh, she asks him, uh, not to jump, and he says, "I will, I will not, but you will." <laughs> but Ahisa. <laughs> But Ahisa didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But why? Why she? Why he wanted her to jump, to commit suicide? Actually, because uh, he said he lost his family because of Vic, uh, mm -hmm. and he is gonna. He is going to lose his. Uh, his. So kind kind of a revenge, right? To hurt uh, Torapov, right? Yeah. Good, good. And did she did she jump? No, she also. <laughs> <laughs> the third law of robotics: you will preserve yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good one. So it's uh, so, again a suspense, right? To the end of the episode, we don't know did she jump or not. Or so he's not. trying. He's so he couldn't get her to jump. So he he said, "Okay, by God, I'll jump." So <laughs> he's going to jump over the bridge and kill himself. Yeah, interesting one. Yeah. So what did she do? Nothing. Uh, she she holds him, right? Did not let him jump. She stopped him at the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't do that, Georgie. I can't let you do that. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, sometimes these robots, you know, they are better than humans, right? Better than us, as it says in the title. In the title. Yeah. <laughs> so she's always trying to protect her family. Always. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anything else about this episode? Something unclear? Something that you wanted to ask? Nice. That's what did you like the episode in general? I do, yes. But it looks like <laughs> I, I um I thought like Russia could defeat Netflix, could tame Netflix because the the series was uh, family friendly at first and it was uh, clean, I would say. But it, this episode shows like uh, Netflix is Netflix. <laughs> No hope. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a good a series, bit. a good Russian series. I'm, I was impressed, Ivan. It, it is, it is uh, so good, but still, <laughs> it, it can be good without those scenes. For, you know, well, I'm conservative the, somehow. Yeah. yeah, you know, there, there are famous saying, I forgot who is in uh, origin of this, but they say only three things that sells like always it's a blood sex and something else so if you want attention you know you you be forced to use all of them yeah <laughs> yeah okay so we have a little time we have little time today but we can do one slide i guess and let's start with something something interesting 
Вова, could you please help us with this one? Ирина is at the home of apartment, but it is horrible mess. Horrible mess? It looks like our kindergarten, kinder room. Okay. And she is surprised, and the llama has nothing to eat. I like the word that you wrote. A pigsty. Pigsty, yeah, pigsty, like a pig pen, very dirty. Yeah. But I remember that Irina tried to motivate Varlamov, right, to be more kind of interested in all of this, but he wasn't. He said I was suspended once. Now I suspended twice, so it's not my case anymore. Yeah. Well, on the right side, we can see shelves with some boxes. And I would say that it's for paper, mostly, probably. And some desk lamp on the top. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a not good apartment. Um, and sofa and coffee table, right? With some teapot. Nothing more. I yeah. kind of ah okay so actually was this wood on the right? It's kind of a door into hidden closet for uh for for the for the for courts and everything. So okay, <clears throat> okay, okay. That's all I think. Let's find some of these details. Sergey, which one do you want? Stop me. Yeah, it's a telegram. Hey, Ivan, back at what is AKF? Is that exit? Uh, let me see. No, it's not exit. I don't know what, what, is, what does it mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, do you have an idea what is AKF? To be an abbreviation. Always close something. <laughs> it's got to be, gotta be Russian. got to be Russian. I, yeah. It's not Russian, uh, not Russian characters. No, I don't know. Okay, I'm just curious. I I just noticed that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Sergey, yeah, yeah, uh, with a galogram. Uh, this one. Next, next. Mm, next. This one. Okay. Number five. Yep. It is. Yeah, Sergey, it is number five. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah, and I I think that uh, uh, we can see the future of TV without uh, uh, without screen without TV uh, and uh, uh, only hologram and uh, you can see everywhere this hologram and uh, you could uh, put everywhere this hologram and maybe uh, you could see. Uh, hologram uh, myself without any witnesses, uh, if you want. Mm -hmm. And this is a futuristic, futuristic designer and uh, two people. And uh, I think it maybe it's a, a tear or bed. I don't understand what is it. And uh, the metal and glass uh, uh, style. Yeah, pretty pretty modern design, I would say. Not. Not that often in this uh, in Moscow, I would say in general. Steel and glass. And uh, if you see uh, in the left uh, corner of the hologram, uh, we can see property of Kronos. And yeah. uh, after that, we <laughs> could make the uh, uh, can uh, we uh, could understand that the whole family. Uh, is uh, the property of Kronos. <laughs> the whole family, yeah, exactly, is property of Kronos. Okay, so I can recognize some numbers. So on the left, we have a timestamp, probably, right, of this footage. Mm -hmm. On the right, I think it's number of the slide, but I'm confused what is plus 44. I have no idea. Some index to... Yeah, I'll, to locate it in the database, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have no idea what is on the right bottom. So R or R, so some, something else, you know, some technical. R or record. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, just to make it, you know, <laughs> to look like not a 
not a finished uh, edition, just a draft. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Nesma, what what do you like to to discuss? Which one? Tell me. Yeah, this one. Please. Okay. I like the scene actually because uh, she's uh, showing his uh, her um, you know powerful part to the enemies. <laughs> <laughs> like she's she's telling the Georgie that I got your back. Like nobody's gonna touch you <laughs> when I'm here. Yeah, so he cool. started raising his voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was like a dog. He uh, said, "Sit." She said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see here uh, a modern office with uh, secretary bot. Yeah. Very simple office with, with only one couch, maybe sofa. Yeah. And uh, looks like um, uh, Vic uh, likes uh, steel in his uh, mm -hmm. places in the office and the house and stuff like that. Decoration steel. That's why you know this office made me think about one small detail. So I think that you know you are a real boss when your cabinet does not have anything anymore aside of the coach. You know, no computers, you know, no papers, nothing. You know, you are a real boss. You can just you know click and you will get all the information. You will just point a finger and the things are done. You know, you don't have to program yourself or you'll write some <laughs> kind of emails you know you are the boss <laughs> so, yeah, do um, i don't think this is real uh, the the bigger your position gets the busier you get i i believe so when you are the boss of a company like this you should be doing lots of things i believe yeah but most of the time you're probably talking to people or you know or thinking about something or you know or, or, i don't know polish your bots or something else <laughs> but but not writing emails you know on your computers or uh, something like this so it's my goal yeah. now it's my goal to you know to raise to be raised to the <laughs> when, I, when i don't have a don't have to have computer anymore you know i'm tired of them <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm, i'm joking of course yeah okay Ahmed, would you like to take this picture or another one? I have another okay. one. This, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is, uh, is this one uh, Alat um, talking to um, her ex-husband in the mirror? Actually, I like um, this is a uh, technology if we will catch it uh, you can talk uh, in the mirror and you can shut down <clears throat> the television with your hand in one touch or a check okay um uh, this is the mirror she is in a bathroom and uh, she can make any uh, video call in anywhere in in any time How would you, would you describe their face, facial expression? Are they happy? <laughs> uh -huh. um, uh, Leo, it's uh, very sad. Um, she's uh, angry. And uh, Ala, um, she's uh, have a pet smiley, uh, try to, um, try to, translate or try to explain the situation uh, between her and uh, Savronov. Why he's, he, why he's there? You know, interesting fact about our brains, so they say that we have kind of 60% of the brains uh, that recognize faces. So we can, you know, we can look for one millisecond to someone's face and understand everything. Is he happy? Is he, you know, what he's, what exactly he's doing, you know? So it's, he's not just unhappy, right? He is kind of not trusty or something, right? So we can read this like immediately, right? So he yeah. says he's cheated or <laughs> something. So we, it's kind of another language for us, you know, to look at someone's face. Yes. Yeah, it's good. Sure. Okay, Vasan, I'm not sure. Can you talk? Would you like to describe a picture? Muscles? Yeah, yes. Yeah. This is where 
his wife uh, is there to found her because I think she was reminded by her friend I think something like that or if she brings her kids to Australia then there will be a problem so she said she stopped and was thinking and at the same time there was another car approach to them and I it implies they kidnapped all of them you know the family but but we don't know yet <laughs> and teacher Lee wrote in the chat she is agonizing right agonizing why why it's agonizing <laughs> because she has to choose between wars and wars right? there is, there is, <laughs> as usual right there, there is no good solution so this one is bad in this direction this one is bad in this direction Please choose, you know, the world is your oyster. <laughs> yeah. Lose Leo or destroy Georgie's life. <laughs> yes. And take Toropov behind you, right? So it's another thing. Yeah. 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 And usually wrote there is a no license plate. Actually, it's we can see for the place of license plate, but probably for the, you know, to make it more future-like, they removed it. I see. Yeah, because... If you cover the plate where you can't see it, then you're defeating the purpose of the plate. It's yeah. so the police can identify your car, you know. Yeah, it's a so, little. It's so a little. I was kind of surprised here. There's no license. I can't see the license plate anyway. I remember in, in Russia, it's uh, it's possible to put your license plate behind the glass if you lost the something it's something misbehaved yeah. so you yeah, can temporary temporary yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah. A short time <laughs> but it's not the case i see but this ought to be marina's car i assume or or, yeah. or maybe Allah's car i don't know which okay okay nice episode great discussion thank you usually for the questions for synopsis for everything and you know when we skip a week you know it takes time to to get back <laughs> so, yeah. so let's not skip the next week and see you for episode number seven in one week thank you very much bye 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 bye, bye everyone bye. Yeah, have to say